in the 1950s, uh, up until the change, this was okay. Uh, many of these countries were happy with this. But as we see, this is also a big bone of contention as countries began to develop. The second factor is the gold standard. Now, while all the other foreign currencies were pegged to the U.S. dollar, the U.S. dollar had pegged itself to the gold standard, believing at the time that in order for a paper money uh, or for a fiat currency to be of value, you needed to have uh, real goods behind them. The U.S. dollar was pegged directly to gold at $35 uh, equaling one ounce of gold. This was good at the time. Uh, it created a stable economy in the U.S. and it allowed us to grow. And it was a great way uh, for us to show our might during the post-war uh, economy. At the time, the 1950s Fort Knox had gold reserves in excess of $23 billion. Uh, it was legendary and is still even legendary today uh, with all uh, the movies that talk about Fort Knox and uh, the belief that Fort Knox is such a great place with all the gold there. But as we see later, Fort Knox became less and less important uh, to our currency. Uh, the core problem uh, with this gold pegging, though, was that every single U.S. dollar that was backed by gold was also exchangeable by gold. So that if you had a $5 bill, you can walk into uh, any bank or treasury and exchange your $5 U.S. currencies for actual uh, $5 worth of gold. And as we see later on, it sets the stage for a lot of problems for the U.S. economy. And in a lot of foreign countries, uh, the U.S. dollar begins to be replaced instead of gold. So in countries that once wanted to back their own currencies with gold or were on a gold or even silver or metals standard felt that holding U.S. dollars was good enough uh, or as good as holding gold, and they began to hold gold, or excuse me, hold dollars instead of gold, and it starts to create problems, especially as we see later when credit becomes uh, an issue. Now, with the strength of the U.S. dollar after World War II, we see that the United States is considered a primary economic power. I, everywhere we turn, countries are buying our goods and services and foreign trade begins to escalate and many countries start holding dollars uh, instead of gold, as I said before. And in the beginning, it's not a big issue. Uh, there's only about eight billion U.S. dollars sitting in foreign banks at the time. Uh, very innocuous, uh, wasn't a big issue to the U.S. Treasury, and they felt that it was healthy to our economy at the time. We also see simultaneously the development uh, more so of the oil industry as our economy becomes more independent on cars and transportation and other countries begin to catch up with us with the development of cars and vehicles. And so the U.S. dollar's prominence uh, at that time was very much a source of our pride, but as we see later, it became a source of our downfall. Now, after about 20 years of the U.S. being on the gold standard, uh, there's a meltdown. And the meltdown occurs at a nexus point in the 1970s. And it falls on the same three things that set it up. It falls on war, uh, the gold standard, and the dollars in foreign banks. And now they've reached a critical mass level. Now, as the first Bretton Woods Agreement was developed, <clears throat> it was developed after World War II. As it begins to fall apart is during the U.S.'s extensive and long drawn out involvement in the Vietnam War. It did a number on our gold reserves, whereas in the 50s we had $23 billion in reserve. We find that by 1970 we only have $12 billion uh, U.S. dollars worth of gold in reserve a huge decrease of about 50% of our gold assets. And this is a problem, especially when all of the currency that's out there in the marketplace is readily exchangeable for gold. At the same time, we see oil business and foreign trade just explode around the world as the, the economies of the countries that we basically helped uh, grow 
through pegging their currency against the dollar, start to heat up. The exact same situation we're seeing in China now, where these countries begin to hold reserves of do dollars in huge amounts. Uh, at the time, over $47 billion uh, were, were sitting in overseas banks. Now, this is a big problem when all $47 billion are capable of being exchanged for gold. If there was ever a gold run by these countries, uh, we couldn't fulfill it. Because since there's $47 billion worth of cash out there and only $12 billion worth of gold in our reserve, we had over a five-time increase in foreign currencies abroad, while 50% of our gold uh, reserves have decreased. And now we had a four-to-one leverage on all of our gold reserves. This is a very scary time. And it caused, uh, as we see later on, inflation uh, in, in America because we couldn't afford to pay our gold debt. And so it was a very, very dicey situation where war was a direct effect, a dr had a direct effect on our currencies in a negative way. Now we look at the uh, another situation where these foreign, currency, these foreign countries who have dollars in their banks decide not to come to U.S. banks to trade uh, or get loans. They decide to work with one another. And it exacerbates the problem of our leverage of 4 to 1. With $47 billion uh, sitting overseas, we see that uh, we just don't have enough gold reserves. But behind the scenes, many European banks begin to leverage uh, are dollars by creating what are known as euro dollar uh, loans. And euro dollar just means US dollars that are not repatriated uh, to America, which are sitting in foreign banks. These foreign banks would make low interest loans to uh, f importers, exporters, uh, developing multinational uh, companies, and create credit from our dollars sitting overseas. So the 47 billion that was sitting there may have ballooned to 120 billion, uh, 200 billion worth of credits that have been extended to these importers and exporters. This was a catastrophe, a catastrophe for the United States. We go from a positive gold uh, reserve to a 50% uh, decrease in our gold reserve, as well as a huge increase in the amount of inflation or leverage that was out there against our gold reserves. At any given time, there could be a financial collapse, and the United States would be plunged into a very, very deep recession, uh, reminiscent of the 1929 crash, uh, if not worse. So we were at a very uh, precarious time in our history with the invention of this euro dollar. And these credit-created dollars all were exchangeable for gold that we just did not have. We next look. We next look at how the Bretton Wood begin agreement begins to collapse. As I said before, in the beginning of the agreement, many foreign countries really appreciated the capability to grow uh, with a peg dollar and be able to export goods at a fixed rate and guarantee uh, the development of their country without problems. But many countries began to overheat. They were growing and expanding at a faster rate and didn't feel that the peg was any longer beneficial to them because they weren't properly competing in the marketplace. The peg was either stifling, stifling them from growing a stronger economy or it was uh, hurting them from doing more exports because maybe their currencies should have been lower than what the peg suggested. So in the 1971, one of the countries that was frustrated was Germany. The same reason why the Bretton Woods Agreement was created is the same reason why it began to fall apart. Uh, after 1950, Germany needed uh, a leg up and used the Bretton Woods Agreement to do so. But in 1971, they felt that the Bretton Woods Agreement was 20 years too old. It, it had outlived its purpose, and there was no way that they, in good conscience as a country, could continue to hold themselves to a peg, an artificial peg at that. And so they decided to float the Deutsche Mark in opposition to the Bretton Woods Agreement. There were no uh, caveats in the agreement that anyone would be punished if they did so. It was always a gentlemanly agreement, so they were well in their right to do so. And I believe uh, the politics at the time was to see how well the world received this floating uh, Deutsche Mark uh, 
development. 